Welcome to Maynardville Public Library, and I'm Miss Shantae, and I'm going to be reading you The Cobweb Christmas. It's a tradition of tinsel. The Cobwebs of Christmas. Once upon a Christmas time, long ago in Germany, there was a little old woman who was so little she had to stand on a stool to climb into her bed. So old, she couldn't even count all the Christmases. She seen the children in the nearby village call her Tanny, which means Amy in German. Tanny lived at the edge of the pine forest in the tiny cottage just large enough for her to keep a canary for singing, a cat for purring, and a dog to lie beside the fire. Squeezed up against the cottage was a barn. In it, Tanny kept a donkey for riding and a goat for milk and cheese. She had a noisy rooster to wake her in the morning and a speckled hen to lay an egg for her breakfast. so many animals about. Her little cottage wasn't very tidy, but a bit of a fur and a few feathers or a spider web or two didn't bother Tiny, except once a year. When the days got shorter and the nights grew longer and the old lady would nod her head and say, time to clean for Christmas. When Tanty shook the quilt and scoured the kettle until it shone, she scrubbed the floor on her hands and knees and stood tiptoe on her stool and swept the cobwebs from the rafters. Shoo! She swished her broom and sent every spider and each wisp of a spider web flying out the door. Then she cleaned her home. From corner to corner, the little old lady nodded and said, Time to fetch Christmas! Tanny took an axe from the barn and hung the harness with bells on the donkey. She scampered onto his back and they trotted into the forest. They circled around and around until the old lady cried, There! She pointed to the pine tree, no bigger than she was. That's the one, just right. She took, told the donkey. Tanny chopped down the tree, taking care to leave enough behind so it might grow again. Then, bells jingling, they went home. Only now the donkey carried the tree upon his back and Tanny skipped along beside him. See the little donkey carrying the tree? The tree fit perfectly in the tiny cottage. The little old woman nodded and said, Time to make Christmas! Tanny made cookies for the tree. She baked gingerbreads for the boys and girls. She rolled sugar cookie shapes like new moons and cut cinnamon cookie stars. She rubbed apples until they gleamed like glass and hung them from the branches too. Next she put a red ribbon on a bone for the dog and tied a sprig of catnip for the cat. Tanny scattered corn for the chickens and seeds for the canaries and she heaped oats in the basket for the donkey and goat. She had something for everybody, didn't she? When the old woman nodded and said, Time to share Christmas! Each year, Tanny invited the village children to come and see her tree. Tanny! they shouted. This is the most wonderful tree in the world! Tell me if it tastes good as it looks, she says. After the children nibbled the apples, 
and the cookies and ate every crumb of gingerbread, they hurried home to put their shoes by the doors for Kris Kringle. He was the Christmas visitor who came from house to house tucking gifts into their waiting shoes. This was another German tradition. When Taney asked the animals to share Christmas, the dog, the cat, the canary, the hen, the rooster, and some small, shy, wild creatures crowded around the tree. The donkey and the goat peered into the doorway. Tanny had something for everyone, everyone except the spiders, for they all had been brushed away, but no one could give the little old lady what she wanted. Do you know what she wanted? Let's find out. All her life, Taney had heard tales about a marvelous happening on Christmas Eve. Animals might speak aloud. Bees might hum carols. Or cocks crow at midnight. Taney wished she could witness a bit of Christmas magic too. She sighed, and she sat down in her rocking chair. Time for Christmas, she said. And she nodded and nodded her head. Taney was so tired from cleaning and cooking that she fell fast asleep. She did not know if the rooster crowed when the clock struck twelve or the dog whispered secrets to the cat and she did not hear the squeaky voices calling at her door. Let us in. Someone else heard Kris Kringle was passing the cottage on his way to take toys to the village. Children, he stopped to listen and he saw hundreds of spiders on Tanny's doorstep. We've never shared a Christmas, the biggest spider explained. Each year, Tanny sweeps us away. Please, Chris Kringle, would you let me see Tanny's tree? Chris Kringle looked down at the spiders. There's no harm in that, he said. Before he went on to the village, he opened Tanny's door a crack. Huge spiders, tiny spiders, smooth spiders, and hairy spiders, spotted spiders and striped spiders, brown and black and yellow spiders, and the palest kind to see through spiders came creepy, crawling, sneaking, softly, scurrying, burring, quickly, lightly, zigzaggy, weaving, waving into the old lady's cottage. The curious spiders crept closer and closer to Tanny's tree. One, two, three, skidded up the trunk, and all the other spiders followed. That's a lot of spiders. Silently, they ran from branch to branch, back and forth and up and down the tree. Wherever the spiders went, they left a trail behind them. Threads looped from limb to limb. The spiders were woven everywhere, but the busy little spiders had shared Christmas. They had seen and felt every twig on the tree, so they scurried away. When he had put the gift in all the children's shoes, Chris Kringle returned to latch Tanny's door. He peeked inside and discovered her tree tangled with sticky, stringy cobwebs. He knew how hard the little old lady had worked to make Christmas and how dismayed she may be when she saw her tree. But he didn't blame the spiders for being curious. Instead, he decided to leave a special gift for Tanny too. Gently, 
Kris Kringle touched each web beneath his finger, and slender strands gleamed like gold, and silver and tangled threads, sparkly silver. Now Taney's tree was truly the most wonderful in the world. The rooster woke Taney in the morning. The little old lady blinked in amazement and her glittering tree. Something magical has happened, she cried, and she climbed on her stool for a better look. On top of the tree, she saw a small spider finishing its web. Ah, Taney nodded her head. So it's you and your kin I have to thank for this Christmas magic. The little old lady understood that such wonders only happened once. Each Christmas thereafter, she did not clean so carefully, but left a few webs in the rafters so that the spiders might share Christmas too. And every year after, she hung the cookies and the apples on her tree. She would nod and say, Time for Christmas magic! When Taney would weave the tinsel among the branches until her tree sparkled with strings of gold and silver, just as it did that magical cobweb of Christmas. This is a day in part of Germany's very first ornament placed on Christmas tree. This is why they put a spider, and it's the first thing that goes on the Christmas tree. This was the first ornament, and then Taney had all kinds of tinsel to put on to her tree, so she remembered the Christmas magic. That's why we put tinsel on our trees, and it is a tradition from Germany. I hope you enjoyed the story. And don't forget to put your spider on your tree this year to celebrate the first ornament of Germany. Have a great day.